In a separate introductory maths cast, I have looked at integrals of the kind shown here. I have given some general discussion about when they are or are not well defined. And I have also talked generally about how one can make a transformation to the complex plane and turn the integrals into contour integrals which can be evaluated using the Cauchy Residue Theorem. Here I want to actually assign some values for A and B and show how this is done. Some of these calculations do get rather lengthy though, so I've decided to split this presentation into several parts. Let's get going, first of all, with the integral 0 to 2 pi, 1 over 2 plus cos theta, d theta. Now, I hope you have viewed the introductory discussions, because there we pointed out that we have to impose a condition. The integral is not defined unless the absolute value of A is greater than that of B. So that must hold. If that condition doesn't hold, then it means that there are values of theta between 0 and 2 pi for which 2 plus cos theta could be 0. In that case, we'd be dividing by zero, and the integrand blows up. Then the integral is not well defined. In this first example, I didn't want to worry about this problem, so I've chosen numbers that work OK. Clearly here, A is 2, and B is 1. And certainly it's the case that the absolute value of 2 is greater than the absolute value of 1, so that's OK. OK, let's get on with actually evaluating the integral. Do you remember what the procedure was? We had to set z equal to e to the j theta, where, of course, j is the square root of negative 1. Then it follows that dz is j e to the j theta d theta, that's just normal differentiation of an exponential, and we could rewrite that as j, but e to the j theta is z. So if we collect the z's on the other side, that tells us that d theta is 1 over j z dz. That result is the same in all these integrals. What about the cos theta? Remember we've got the Euler result. That cos theta is a half e to the j theta plus e to the negative j theta. If we write that in terms of z, it's a half z plus 1 over z. That's all we need for the integrand. Now we just need to remember about what happens with the limits. As theta runs from 0 to 2 pi, z runs around the unit circle in the complex plane. So our integral becomes the integral around the closed contour, which is the unit circle. That's mod z equals 1. Then remember we've got the 1 over jz that comes from the d theta, and the dz also on the end and we've got 1 over, and it was, do you remember, 2 plus cos theta. So 2 plus a half, z plus 1 over z, all underneath. Let's set about simplifying that a little bit. First of all, the 1 over j. 1 over j is the same as negative j, and it's a constant, so let's pull it outside. Inside, we have 1 over. Let's multiply the z out by the structure that's underneath the 1. That's going to make 2z, and it's going to make a half z squared. And when the z hits the 1 over z, that will become 1, but there's also a half in front there. That's getting a bit better, but we're still not over keen on those halves underneath. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2, 
I'll get rid of the halves. The two on the top could stay outside to the left. That still leaves one inside and dz. Now I'm going to multiply the bottom by two but I'm also going to write it in the order of a normal quadratic. So that will be 1z squared plus 4z plus 1. That looks a lot neater in this form. Now do you remember what we have to do next? We have to find out about that function underneath. Where might it be zero? We have to look for the poles of the integrand. So look for poles of, let's call that integrand f of z. Once we've got the poles, we check. Are they inside or outside? the contour. Which contour do I mean? I mean the contour mod z equals 1, the unit circle. The poles, of course, are the places where that function would blow up. We hope that none of them are actually on the unit circle, because that would give us problems. We're hoping that they will be inside or outside or both of the unit circle. So our next task is to solve the equation z squared plus 4z plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to get as far as solving that equation and then finish this presentation and then I'll do the actual integration in part 2. To solve that equation it doesn't obviously factorize so let's go straight for the quadratic formula. Minus 4 plus or minus square root of 4 squared would be 16 minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2. That simplifies to negative 2 plus or minus root 12 over 2. 12 is 4 threes, so that simplifies to minus 2 plus or minus root 3. So my next question is, is either of those poles inside the unit circle? We need some idea of their magnitude. Root 3 is very roughly 1.7. It's not exact, but it's good enough. That means that negative 2 subtract root 3 is approximately negative 3.7, but negative 2 plus root 3 is approximately negative 0 0.3. Let's draw those in the complex plane. Here's our unit circle, radius 1. Clearly negative 2 minus root 3 is minus 3.7. That's way over here on the negative real axis. On the other hand, minus 2 plus root 3 is inside. Round about at minus 0.3. So we've got one pole inside the circle. So it's inside mod z equals 1. So our Cauchy residue theorem says that the integral around the contour of f of z, dz, f of z remember was our quadratic underneath, 1 over z squared plus 4z plus 1, it's that, in, that function there. 
So the integral around the contour is equal to 2 pi j times the residue of f of z at the pole which is inside. That's negative 2 plus root 3. I'm going to stop there and evaluate that residue and finalize the integral in part 2.